In this lecture we're going to look at dimensioning. We've already looked quickly at dimensions, you might remember they're here on the Dims and Notes toolset, and we've already used this dimension here, the Constrained Linear Dimension tool. We've used it already in the first mode, which is the way that allows us to create a simple dimension. We'll just create another dimension for that part there. And we've also used it in the second mode here, where we can create a chain of dimensions. So click there, click there, click at the next one, and double click to finish. And we've looked at that as well. We haven't looked at this method, which is the baseline one. So we click, click, place the first dimension, and the second dimension is measured from the baseline, and so on. Double click to stop. And we haven't looked at this one either. So let's have a look at this. We go click, click, and then we move to the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and so on, and double click to finish. And that can be quite useful, I think, for some maybe some landscape type things, or anything where you require to record running dimensions. We have our preferences, which allow us to create smart chain objects. And we also have our dimension standard, which is allows us to choose the way a dimension appears. So let's have a look at that. Back to my selection tool, I'm going to select that dimension. And on our object info palette, we can also change our dimension standard, so we can see what they look like. Just choose the one that's most suitable for you. For me, that's the one that I like to use. Here's a chain of dimensions. Again, we could choose the dimension standard. We could also choose, for any dimension, the text style. You might remember in the last lecture we made some text styles. So you could choose what kind of text you want to have on your dimensions. And if you choose a text style, it will connect that dimension to your style. And any time you change your text style, it will change that dimension. We can also add and subtract dimensions. Right click, we can add a dimension. Right click, we can delete a dimension. We can move dimension lines around. Now if I click there on the line, see my cursor changes to a double headed arrow, click, I can drag that line down, so click and drag, click and drag, move it up. If I go to the number, I click and drag, and when I let go it moves the number, or the dimension. This dashed line here is the line that controls my witness lines. So you can see I've got a shorter witness line on that side. This one, we can pull that back. We can also control these witness lines in a different way by using a fixed witness line length, but that's not for this course. I'm just going to put some more dimensions on. I'm going to dimension this part of my object. So click there, click, and then every click lines up with the first setting. So double click to finish, click, click, and I can touch this point over here to line up with it, and then click, 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 and double click to finish. What about a dimension that goes from here down to there on the angle? We can't use the current one because it only does constrained linear dimensions. So I'm just going to hit the escape key to get out of that. And I'm going to change to the unconstrained linear dimension. Now the unconstrained linear dimension allows you to put dimensions on the angle. I'm just going to hold down my shift key to constrain that to 30 degrees. And there's my dimension on an angle. So anytime you need a dimension on the angle, then you can use that unconstrained. How about circular dimensions? We can use our radial dimension tool. This one dimensions a diameter. So click and click. So that's my diameter dimension. This one is still a diameter. This one is a radius on the inside. This one's a radius on the outside. And these two buttons allow us to have our marker out to the right or to the left. So I click on that corner, and it's a radius. So I click on this corner. That's also a radius, and you can choose where you want to put that. And if you need one on this side, you click, and you notice that my leader is going the wrong direction on the Object Info palette we can turn that to the left. How about angular dimensions? Let's look at our angular dimensions. So the dimension between that line and that line it says the constraint is invalid, and it's invalid because that's a polygon rather than just a line. If it was two lines, it would work. 
This is by a reference line. So I'm going to touch this point, not click, but I'm going to touch there, come down to here, come to there, now touch that line there, and I can put a reference line in that point. I showed you that you can move these dimensions. The same thing applies to any of your angular dimensions. Click and drag, click and drag, and you can move those anywhere that you need to. If we scroll down the Object Info Palette, you'll notice there's a Note option here. This is for writing notes. So you can put notes on your dimensions. We can also put Check on Site. So don't forget, if you need to add a note, you can do that with your Note option. If you need to turn off the dimension number, it's the dimension value it's called. You can just turn that off. And you notice the note takes its place. So I suppose you could replace this with 2 inches or something else that you wanted. I don't recommend that. I recommend you draw accurately so that your dimensions are completely up to date. Now that we have some dimensions on our drawing and we've got some text, I wanted to look at this palette here, the Resource Manager. Here it is. We can look at the types of resources that we have in our file, so what gradients are here, what hatches are here, and so on. In particular, I'd like to look at our textiles. Now, we created two textiles, and they live in the Resource Manager. If I want to change a selected dimension to use a specific textile, I can double-click on the textile in the Resource Manager. And double clicking will assign that text. I can also drag and drop. So I can click and hold my mouse button down. You see I'm dragging it out. Find the text that you want to line up with. Wait till it turns red. And it's easier if you just go straight to the line. And then let go of your mouse. Let's do that again. Click and hold your mouse button down. You see it drag. Go to a line. Let go. And you may have heard a, a little bump or a little bleep, a system beep. That's because we were dragging a textile to an object that can't accept a textile. Down the bottom, you can see on the bottom right-hand corner, the object does not support the application. So anytime you try and drop it onto a polygon, you'll get that message. Go to a dimension, you won't get the message. You can let go of your mouse. So that's a way of getting your textile onto your dimension. We can also use the Resource Manager to create duplicates. So we could make a duplicate of this one. We could give it a different name like 9 point or 8 point, something different. Let's make it 8 point. Let's right click on that and then edit. So we can edit our textile. So this is not 20, it's only 8, it's not bold. And OK. Now I can double click on my 8 point and now I've got 8 point text on that dimension. In an earlier exercise, Tools and Commands in Detail, I showed you how to use a tool for selecting similar objects. If you use that to select similar objects and then double clicked on the textile here, it would apply that textile to all of your selected objects.